Welcome everyone. Today's lecture is on adrenergic transmission. Learning objective by the end of this lecture, you will be able to discuss steps involved in adrenergic neurotransmission and enumerate different adrenergic receptors, their location, mechanism of signal transduction. Adrenergic transmission. See, adrenergic transmission is going to occur only in the sympathetic nervous system. And in this nervous system, the main neurotransmitter or the principal neurotransmitter is norepinephrine. This epinephrine, norepinephrine, which is also known as adrenaline, noradrenaline, and dopamine. So they are together known as catecholamines. This point is very, very important. What are catecholamines means? These are the compounds which possess a catechol muoti or a benzene ring with two adjacent hydroxyl group and an amide side chain. So when you are going to see the structure of epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine, you are going to find a catechol muoti or a benzene ring with two adjacent hydroxyl group and an amide side chain. So let's see what is norepinephrine means. It is a principal neurotransmitter in sympathetic nervous system and it is the transmitter at the postganglionic sympathetic nerve except the sweat gland. Epinephrine, major hormone which is secreted by adrenal medulla. And dopamine, a major transmitter in basal ganglia, limbic system, chemoreceptor, tegel zone, anterior pituitary, etc. Let's study the biosynthesis of catecholamine. So, biosynthesis of catecholamine is going to involve five steps. The first step is synthesis of catecholamine. Second is storage of catecholamine. Third, release of catecholamine. Fourth, uptake of catecholamine. And fifth, metabolism of catecholamine. So let's study the biosynthesis of catecholamine in detail. So first one is synthesis of catecholamine. So catecholamines are synthesized from the amino acid phenylalanine. So this biosynthetic pathway initiated when L-tyrosine is transported into the adrenergic neuron. So once the L-tyrosine enter or transported into the adrenergic neuron, here the cytosolic enzyme that is tyrosine hydrolase will convert L-tyrosine to dehydroxyphenylalanine, And this tyrosine hydrolase is a rate limiting step in the synthesis of catecholamine because the activity of this tyrosine hydrolase is controlled by the concentration of norepinephrine present in the cytoplasm. So this enzyme is going to get inhibited in the presence of high concentration of norepinephrine. So thus, it is going to prevent the conversion of L-tyrosine to L-dopa. So that is why it is called, said as the rate-limiting step in the synthesis of catecholamine. So second steps involve the conversion of L-dopa to dopamine by cytosolic enzyme that is aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase or in simple word, dopa decarboxylase. Okay, and this is considered as the final step in the synthesis of catecholamine as dopamine is the important neurotransmitter in the CNS. So this dopamine, which is synthesized from L-dopa in the cytoplasm, is actively transported into the exon terminal, where it is going to get hydrolyzed to norepinephrine. So this reaction is going to get catalyzed by dopamine beta hydroxylase, which is present in synaptic vesicles. So this norepinephrine will undergo and methylation to form epinephrine. And this reaction is going to get catalyzed by phenylethylamine and methyl transferase, which is present in the adrenal medulla. So this is how the synthesis of catecholamine is going to take place. Second step is storage of catecholamine. So noradrenaline nor or norepinephrine, it is going to get stored into the synaptic vesicle or granules, which is present within this adrenergic nerve terminal. So here, noradrenaline is going to bind with ATP in the ratio of 4 is to 1. And this is going to happen with the help of chromogranin protein, which is a soluble binding protein. So why it is forming complex with ATP is to prevent the excessive osmotic pressure inside the cell and in turn prevent the leakage of neurotransmitter. Third step is release of catecholamine. So by means of exocytosis, all vesicular contents, so whatever is present in the storage vesicle like noradrenaline, adrenaline, ATP, dopamine, beta, hydroxylase, chromogranin. So this is all going to get released into the synaptic cliff. 
Now, fourth step is uptake of curricular mind. So there are two uptake. First one is neuronal uptake, which is also known as uptake one. So in this, noradrenaline is transported into the neuronal cytoplasm, and this is going to happen with the help of a mind pump. Example is norepinephrine transport, and this pump is going to get inhibited by cocaine, tricyclic antidepressant, coabine, and amphetamine. One more is small uptake is there, that is vesicular uptake, which is also known as granular uptake. So here the noradrenaline, which is present in the cytoplasm, is transported into the vesicle. And this is going to happen with the help of BMAT2, that is vesicular monoamine transporter 2. And this is going to get blocked by risapine. Second uptake is extra neuronal uptake, which is also known as uptake 2. So in this uptake, the noradrenaline is taken into the gall cells, muscles, and glands. So this is all going to take place in the presence of extra neuronal transporter and organic cation transporter. Okay. So after they are going to get entered into the gall cell, muscle glands, and other tissue, they are going to get destructed. And this uptake is going to get blocked by corticosteroid. So remember, neuronal uptake is also known as uptake 1 and extra neuronal uptake is also known as uptake 2. So last step is metabolism of catecholamine. So catecholamine is going to get metabolized in the presence of two enzymes, that is monoamine oxidase enzyme and methyl transferase. So this two enzyme plays a very important role in the metabolism of epinephrine and as well as norepinephrine. So MAO and COMT, they are going to convert adrenaline and noradrenaline into 3-methoxy-4-hydroxymandelic acid. So these metabolites are subjected to glucuronidation and conjugation reaction, and then they are going to get excreted in urine. So this completes the biosynthesis of catecholamine. Next, we will study regarding the adrenergic receptors. So adrenergic receptors are the membrane-bond G-protein coupled receptor whose main function is to increase or decrease the intracellular production of secondary messenger like cyclic AMP or IP3 and DAG. Okay, so adrenergic receptors are classified by Alquist in the year 1948 into alpha receptor and beta receptor. Alpha receptor is further classified into alpha 1 receptor, alpha 2 receptor and beta receptors are further classified into beta-1 receptor, beta-2 receptor, and beta-3 receptor. So let's study in detail regarding alpha receptor and beta receptor. So first we will study regarding alpha receptor. So alpha receptor is classified into alpha-1 and alpha-2. Location, alpha-1 location is that post-junctional on effector organ, whereas alpha-2 pre-junctional on nerve ending, also post-junctional in brain, pancreatic beta cell, and extra-junctional in certain blood vessels, platelet. Function, uh, functions of alpha-1 is smooth muscle. It is going to cause contraction, vasoconstriction, gland secretion, gut relaxation, and on liver glycogenolysis and heart arrhythmias. Whereas alpha-2 function is that inhibition of transmitter release, vasoconstriction, decreased central sympathetic flow, decreased insulin release, and platelet aggregation. So agonist for alpha-1 is Phenyl, phenylephrine and methoxamine. So these are the selective agonists of alpha-1, whereas selective alpha-2 agonist is clonidine. Selective antagonist at alpha-1 is prazosin, and at alpha-2 is yohimbine rovalsin. Coupling protein is, uh, that is G-protein coupled receptor only. So under that also, it is going to get coupled by GQ under alpha-1 and GI or GO under alpha-2 and effector pathway in alpha-1 is IP3-DAG and phospholipase 82, they are going to increase the prostaglandin release. Whereas in alpha-2, cyclic AMP is going to get decreased, whereas there will be an increase in the potassium channel, decrease or increase in the calcium channel and increase in the IP3-DAG pathway. So let's see regarding the beta receptors. So beta receptor is classified into beta-1, beta-2, beta-3. So location of beta-1 is, remember, it is located in the heart and also on the juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney. So on heart, it is going to cause a force of contraction and increase in the heart rate. Increase in the force of contraction and increase in the heart rate. Whereas in kidney, it is going to cause increase in the renin release. Um, 
location for a beta 2 is bronchi blood vessels uterus liver git urinary tract and eye so what they are going to cause means they are going to cause a vasodilation of the blood vessels supplying the skeletal muscle and coronaries bronchodilation under bronchi relaxation of the wall of git and urinary bladder and on liver it is going to cause us increase in the glycogenolysis and also gluconeogenesis and beta 3 location is adipose tissue where it is going to cause us increase in the lipolysis agonist of beta 1 is dobutamine beta 2 is solbutamine terbutalin and beta 3 is brl 37344 selective antagonist for beta 1 is metoprolol etinolol and for beta 2 is ICI118551 and alpha methyl propanolol. Okay. And relative potency of noradrenaline and adrenaline is that under beta 1, noradrenaline potency is less than or sometimes equal to adrenaline. Under beta 2, the noradrenaline potency is less when compared to adrenaline. Under beta 3, the noradrenaline potency is greater when compared to adrenaline. So this complete regarding the adrenergic receptors. Thank you.